Hi, I am coming to you from the living room of our champion tiny house slash cottage. It's actually 880 square feet, so it doesn't fit the tiny house specifications of under 400 square feet. So most true tiny homes are 399, but this is a cottage, what some people call a mini mansion. <laughs> so it's a prefab manufactured home, but it's shotgun style and has the porch that I showed you and that you can see on some of our other videos. So if you haven't watched Delivery Day, which was March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, the cottage arrived on our property and that video will show you the actual arrival. I gave a tour of the empty house and pointed out some of the features there. And so now I'm here to show you what it looks like furnished and give some updates. Uh, this will be the first of a series because first of all, we know that most people don't watch past five or six minutes. So I don't want to give you some marathon length tour. I'll let you come back when you're ready and watch part two and part three. So I'm going to do the first half of the house this time. I'll do the back half of the house when it's cleaner. And then I'll do the outside of the house when it's not so freaking windy. So let's get started. We've got little Miss Cookie there posing for the camera. <laughs> but when you walk into the house, you walk directly into this open floor plan. So our living room and kitchen area all together. These are some fun things that we have collected over the years. So in terms of furnishing, it's a very eclectic mix of old, new, um, most of it has a story, so I'll share some of the stories as we go along. But we wanted to have a very rustic feel because we are in the country after all. So things like buffalo hides as a rug are perfectly acceptable when you live on a 20-acre hobby farm that's actually right in the middle of cattle country. So if you look out the two gorgeous windows, three gorgeous windows, you won't see anyone for miles there is a little farmhouse up at the top of the hill but nobody actually lives there so we have privacy um, just in every direction this is what the front door looks like so one of the things we loved about this floor plan was the vaulted ceiling with the wood beam and then, of course, the three big picture windows that have the three transom windows above them. So it lets in so much natural light. I thought we were going to leave these as they are and realize that we needed to have curtains to block out the afternoon sun and heat. So normally I would have those curtains closed this time of day, but I have them open to show you how pretty the light is when it comes into the house. I'll be glad when it's not... July 108 degree temperatures. We went with sort of this rust and brown theme. I just love all the terracotta decor that's available now. I got most of this on Wayfair. And then the tables, the little nesting tables here, were a gift from a family friend. She wasn't going to use them. So we said, sure, we'll take them. And we've got one there and then one over here with the record player on it. I was so inspired by my friend Rachel who has a knack for interior design and has always had a record player at the front of her house. And so I definitely wanted to use what we had. Over here is an antique typewriter that was my grandfather's. And so I wanted to have that on display there are so many things in here that we have from grandparents. This pheasant, for example, is Emmett, and he is Ryan's grandfather's pheasant um, that he shot and has made it through um, several moves for Ryan. And so Emmett was the first piece of decor that I let him put in the house we had in Phoenix I lived there first, and when he moved in, he kind of snuck it on the wall, but I told him it could stay. So Emmett is now part of the family, 
And we do have that Grand Canyon picture that's an homage to us meeting in Arizona. If you want the whole story, it's in my memoir, Strong Roots, Wayward Soul. It's pretty amusing. All these family photos and then my grandmother's piano, which has traveled with us through a couple of moves. It's the reason we had to have climate controlled storage and neither of us actually play. Ryan can play to some extent. I have yet to learn, but I hope to be able to do that in the future. The piano is also in the book. And I'd be remiss if I didn't point out my beautiful fig, fiddle leaf fig plant. Um, she is actually the second one I've had. The first one didn't survive the move from the Fort Worth house to the camper, but I got a new one in the camper and she survived the move here and she absolutely loves it because she gets so much light. And I'm very proud of all of the new leaves that she has put on this year. So this is my favorite thing in the entire room. I love the simplicity of the kitchen, the white with the gray. So I try to keep it really um, minimal <laughs> with countertops, but I, even right now, the spice rack that's above the oven, I keep debating taking that down because it just seems like a little bit of clutter, but it's not always this clean either. So that was the only reason I decided to give a tour is because I had just finished cleaning. All of the blue glass was from my grandmother's house, and I remember her always having one of these pictures in her kitchen window, which ours isn't quite big. In the spirit of being human, uh, I did leave a couple of dirty dishes in the sink, <laughs> but I wanted to share that this farmhouse sink is pretty flat. So that's one of the things we've been disappointed in in this kitchen is the fact that it's really hard to run things down so they kind of get trapped over in these corners and so we have to like sweep it out with the rag, the rag or the sponge so if that's true for all farmhouse sinks let me know in the comments if it's not i don't know i'm open to any tips Yes, I have the washer running. It's on the spin cycle, so it's a little bit noisy at the moment. But, you know, life doesn't take a break just to make a YouTube video. So when you come over from the kitchen, we have our little breakfast dining area. These chairs are all chairs that we had in Fort Worth, but we had an eight-foot dining table. So we actually left it for the people who purchased the house. We looked and looked for one that we liked, and I found one in town, downtown Hamilton, that was small and the perfect size, but it was a little high for what we wanted to pay. And then Ryan realized that it had been a desk. So it had wood across the bottom and you couldn't push chairs in. Well, I was so grateful that we he realized before we bought it. And the ladies who own the antique store, Burlap Rose, took us over to a storage area they had and showed us this table and it was in not so great shape but all it needed was some tongue oil and it looks fantastic now and it was um, in our price range so it worked out even better one of my favorite tools in the kitchen is the ninja grill so i'm not sure what all devices people have in their kitchen but I love this thing. I bought it for the air fryer function, but also the fact that I can grill in here without too much smoke. I do still have to turn the ventilation on with the oven hood. Um, and this oven hood was an upgrade, so we asked for the more sleek uh, modern one. And so we've been really happy with the look of that and the functionality of it. And I'll turn the little light on to make it look all fancy, like I'm in the kitchen all the time, even though I'm not. I'm pretty much just throwing stuff in the Ninja Grill, hitting roast or bake, and it's done in 20 minutes. But this was just going to be a window, and we asked for an, if we could have a door put here, and this was the option they gave us. So it was an upgrade. I think it was about $1,500 maybe, but totally worth it because 
first of all, I can watch the beautiful sunset out of these large windows. But second of all, we'll eventually put a deck on and then this will be our, basically our front door because we park over there. So this will be a nice place to come in. Not that it's a huge ordeal to just walk over to the other side of the house, but it'll be nice to have both sides have decks and be outdoor living spaces when it's not so freaking hot. Another thing I absolutely love about this house is this little coffee bar, coffee station. The exposed shelves are a great way to display really cute dishes. And then I have my Magnolia Market Don Joy sign, the world needs who you were made to be. So that's a nice uplifting message for me every day when I make my coffee. So just to get you oriented, we come through the living room into the dining area, the kitchen, and then we have one bathroom in the front, which is the whole reason I picked this floor plan, if you saw the first video, and that is that there's a bathtub in here. So I absolutely love this bathroom. The bathtub is tiny, so lucky for me, I am only five foot two, so I can fit in the bathtub. Most of this decor was from the Fort Worth house, so I just love the colors. I love the jewel tones. It's a $12 shower curtain from Walmart that is fun and festive, and I love the splatter and the colors that match, so I got it. And a little antique piece that we have um, also from Burlap Rose. And pretty much this is where our tour ends for today. The washer is going. We've got a washer and dryer in here. Uh, our dirty little secret is this box that needs to be in the tiny house but has just been sitting here for months because we don't have a place to store it. So using that little nick and cranny for <laughs> overflow storage. We do have a ton of storage in this house. It's just some of the things that we haven't purged yet or that they've found their ultimate purpose are just here in the hallway. So. That's it for today and stay tuned for part two and I will show you the back half.